Today, in our video, we turn our focus to another captivating video filled with ambition, rivalry, and innovation. The story of Lamborghini, Ferrari's most formidable competitor. Watch till the end to uncover the twists and turns that shaped this iconic brand. Our story begins in the northern Italian province of Emilia-Romagna, in the serene town of Renazzo di Cento. Here, amid the lush vineyards, lived Antonio and Evelina Lamborghini, humble grape farmers who would raise a son destined for greatness, Ferruccio Lamborghini. Ferruccio was born in 1916 amid the turmoil of World War I. Despite the challenging times, he grew up with an unwavering sense of hope and ambition. However, like many young Italians in the early 20th century, he faced a pivotal choice to continue the family tradition of farming or venture into the world of factories and industry. For Ferruccio, the decision was crystal clear. His heart and soul belonged to machines, and his father's garage became his sanctuary. His unrelenting passion led him to pursue studies in mechanics. By 1935, Ferruccio felt confident enough to take the daring step of establishing his own workshop. Just five years later, the shadow of the Second World War disrupted his civilian life. Drafted into the Royal Italian Air Force in 1940, Ferruccio served as a skilled mechanic on the Greek island of Rhodes. During his service, Ferruccio gained invaluable experience in salvaging and repurposing old machinery. However, as 1943 rolled around and Italy surrendered, a German force seized control of the garrison, evicting their former allies. Ferruccio could have chosen to leave, but he made the audacious decision to remain as a civilian, running his workshop with the reluctant approval of the Germans. The German authorities admired Ferruccio's technical prowess, and he continued to operate his workshop under their watchful eyes. However, 1945 saw the arrival of Allied forces who took the garrison's inhabitants as prisoners of war. Yet, Ferruccio's talents did not go unnoticed, and he was promptly put to work repairing Allied vehicles until his return home in 1946. Back on Italian soil, Ferruccio embarked on another brief venture with a new workshop. However, a brilliant idea soon took root in his mind. Drawing from his experiences with both Allied and Axis vehicles, Ferruccio foresaw Italy's pressing need for agricultural machinery to recover from the ravages of war. The surplus military equipment commissioned by Mussolini's government presented a golden opportunity. In late 1947, Ferruccio embarked on his audacious journey by founding his first company. Armed with just three mechanics and an initial capital of 2,000 lire, he embarked on large-scale production of affordable tractors. His primary supplier was ARR, a government-owned company responsible for selling surplus military equipment. Ferruccio's innovative approach involved modifying old British Morris engines to run on cost-effective diesel instead of expensive petrol. This revolutionary move gave birth to the groundbreaking Carioca tractor, unveiled with great fanfare on February 3, 1948. Italy's enthusiastic response to these tractors was nothing short of spectacular. The resounding success of the Carioca tractors inspired Ferruccio to establish a second company, Lamborghini Trattori. He expanded his workforce, acquired a factory, and secured a 10 million lira loan backed by his family's grape farm, enabling him to purchase hundreds of Morris, Perkins, and Dodge engines from ARR. The ambitious Ferruccio also decided to enter the prestigious Milamiglia endurance race. Although an incident ended his racing career, his company continued to thrive. By 1950, Trattori boasted a workforce of 30 people and had the capacity to produce over 200 tractors annually. Demand surged, prompting Ferruccio to acquire additional land and construct a new factory in 1951. This pivotal year also marked the introduction of the L33 tractor, a model that would greatly benefit from government subsidies provided to farmers who use domestically built machinery. After forging a partnership with Motorenwerk in Mannheim for diesel engines, Lamborghini was now capable of producing tractors entirely in-house. By 1956, Ferruccio's new factory produced its inaugural tractor, and the company had refined its engine designs, offering various tiers of horsepower. Expanding his horizons, Ferruccio ventured across the Atlantic to acquire cutting-edge heating and air conditioning technology from the United States. The early 1960s witnessed the zenith of Lamborghini's tractor factory, with 400 employees churning out as many as 30 tractors daily. During this period, Lamborghini's engineers achieved notable milestones, including the development of air-cooled tractor engines and even helicopter concepts, although these concepts never received official approval. 
1961, Ferruccio Lamborghini unveiled something extraordinary. Not another tractor, but a separate oil heater factory. By this point, he had amassed considerable wealth, and he decided it was time to indulge in his lifelong passion for sports cars. Now, Ferruccio was no ordinary car enthusiast. He was a learned mechanic himself. His keen eye could spot engineering faults from a mile away, and it wasn't long before he turned his discerning gaze towards his own collection of cars. Among these fine automobiles were two Alfa Romeos, two Maseratis, a Jaguar E-Type, a Mercedes-Benz, and, of course, several Ferraris. While the Ferraris held a special allure for Ferruccio, he couldn't help but notice some glaring issues. He found them needlessly noisy, and believed their interiors lacked the sophistication he desired. What irked him the most, however, was the peculiar tendency of Ferraris to suffer constant clutch failures. After one too many frustrating repair bills, Ferruccio had had enough. He decided to take matters into his own hands and drove his problematic Ferrari straight to Modena, where he would have a face-to-face -face encounter with none other than Enzo Ferrari himself. He was on a mission to address the clutch issues that had plagued his cars. However, according to Ferruccio, the encounter took a rather surprising turn. Enzo essentially brushed him off, suggesting that he should stick to his tractors. For most people, this might have been the end of the story, a moment of frustration brushed aside. But for Ferruccio Lamborghini, it was a challenge he couldn't ignore. He knew that the world of Gran Turismo cars held immense profit potential. And in 1963, this tractor tycoon decided to take matters into his own hands. He established an automobile factory near Sant'Agata, driven by a primordial desire to show Enzo Ferrari the middle finger. Thus, Automobili Lamborghini was born. Ferruccio chose a bold emblem for his brand, the Bull. This emblem wasn't just a random choice, it was Ferruccio's astrological sign, and he had a deep fascination for the world of bullfighting. The Bull, a fearsome and relentless creature, turned out to be the perfect symbol for Lamborghini's journey as it charged through milestones year after year. In 1964, Automobili Lamborghini introduced the world to its first working model, the GT350, crafted in collaboration with the young engineer Paolo Stanzani. This car showcased an array of impressive technologies, including a V12 engine, five-speed transmission, four-wheel disc brakes, and four-wheel independent suspension. Despite initial design challenges, the GT350 emerged as a technical masterpiece, receiving acclaim from both critics and customers alike. The year 1966 witnessed the unveiling of two iconic models, the 400 GT and the Miura P400. The latter, in particular, made history by establishing the rear mid-engine layout as the gold standard for high-performance cars, a configuration still utilized in today's sports cars. The late 1960s ushered in the introduction of Lamborghini classics such as the Espada and the Islero 400 GT in 1968. The company continued to thrive, debuting celebrated models like the Countach LP500, the Uraco P250, and the Yorama 400 GTS. However, the 1970s would prove to be challenging times for Lamborghini. In 1973, just two years after the collapse of the Bretton Woods system, the global stock market experienced a catastrophic crash, with the Dow Jones erasing nearly half of its value. Simultaneously, OAPEC, Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries, initiated an oil embargo, leading to a surge in fuel prices and plunging the automotive industry into a crisis. As if these challenges were not enough, Lamborghini Trattori faced another blow when a deal to supply Bolivia with 5,000 tractors was cancelled following the 1971 coup led by Hugo Banzer. To salvage his various enterprises, Ferruccio pursued various strategies, eventually finding buyers for the unsold tractors. He also relocated his oil heater factory to Doso in Nigeria. Despite his valiant efforts, Ferruccio was compelled to sell shares of Lamborghini to external investors to avert bankruptcy. The financial crisis deeply impacted him, and in the midst of widespread strikes and unionization sweeping across Italy, Ferruccio made the difficult decision to retire in 1973. As part of his restructuring efforts, he sold the Trattori business in 1973 to another Italian tractor manufacturer. A year later, in 1974, Ferruccio divested his remaining 49% stake in Automobili Lamborghini to a Swiss businessman named René Leimer, who was joined by a friend holding the remaining 51%. Together, they aimed to resurrect the Lamborghini brand, 
However, despite their endeavors, Automobili Lamborghini eventually faced liquidation. In 1980, the Italian government sold Lamborghini for $3 million to the Mimran brothers, French entrepreneurs with vast sugarcane plantations and flour mills in Africa. The Mimran brothers embarked on an ambitious plan to renovate Lamborghini's facilities and assemble a new team of engineers. However, they soon overshot their budget, leading to the sale of the company. In 1987, Lamborghini came under the ownership of Chrysler, driven by a vision to introduce the luxury car brand into the United States market. Yet less than five years later, Lamborghini remained unprofitable. Subsequently, Chrysler sold Lamborghini to an Indonesian conglomerate. Under Indonesian ownership, Lamborghini made modest progress and even achieved a modest profit of $120,000 in 1996. However, the 1998 financial crisis in Asia triggered another change in ownership. This time, Ferdinand Piak of Volkswagen, who had also acquired Bentley and Bugatti, purchased Lamborghini. With Volkswagen's guidance, Lamborghini underwent significant restructuring, streamlining its operations, and setting the stage for a resurgence in the luxury sports car market. The brand began aggressively marketing its name while investing heavily in research and development. Lamborghini diversified its car lineup to appeal to a broader range of budgets, although even its more affordable models remained out of reach for the average consumer. The crowning achievement of modern Lamborghini is undoubtedly the Gallardo, which, over its 10-year production run, sold slightly over 14,000 units, solidifying its position as Lamborghini's most popular model. In 2015, Lamborghini recorded its best year in history, with sales surging from just over 2,500 cars to over 3,000. The company continued its expansion with the introduction of other high-performance models like the Urus SUV concept and the Huracan, the successor to the Gallardo, as global sustainability concerns grew, Lamborghini adapted by investing in hybrid technologies and researching EV solutions. The CN FKP37, unveiled in 2019, was Lamborghini's first hybrid supercar, hinting at the brand's future combination of power and eco-consciousness. They also announced plans for a fully electric vehicle and hybrid versions of existing models. In the early 2020, the demand for luxury cars surged and Lamborghini business thrived. By 2023, Lamborghini was recognized for resilience and adaptability in a changing world, continuing to honor Ferruccio Lamborghini's vision of carving a unique path in automotive history. It is safe to say that if Ferruccio Lamborghini could witness his company's present success, he would take immense pride in knowing that Lamborghini once again stands as a formidable challenger to Ferrari. Give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.